when I'm tripping, when I'm canoe tripping, I normally carry a, it's a, uh, it's a stove, it's a Primus stove, it doesn't require any pumping, you carry a canister with it screwed in the bottom, um, the problem is you got to carry a canister with it, with this thing, this is a tin can, out of this tin can you can make something called a hobo stove, the hobo stove is literally a heater based on like a, a barrel principle and it is phenomenal to use I mean phenomenal in a very short with a little bit of fuel you can boil water in like two three minutes and it requires no fuel and it weighs nothing you can tie it onto the back of your pack the only thing is it makes noise big deal you stuff it full of socks or whatever you need to stuff it full of and put it in your pack you're good to go now this happened to be um, from my last canoe trip, I used uh, I always use Mountain House stuff. Anyway, regardless, the point is, is this this stuff is um, it's a perfect size can. I believe this is called the 10 ounce can. Regardless, strip off the label. All right, you don't have to, but strip off the label and um, expose the expose the can. And then now, what you want to do? The top is open. Okay. In order to make this work, in order to make a can like this work, you've got to cut a hole through the side. Right here. You've got to cut a hole. Once you cut that hole through the side, it acts like a venturi and it sucks the air in. Once the fire gets going, it sucks the air in and forces it out the top. It's a beautiful thing. Um, it's so easy to make too. All you need is a knife right, and a can. That's it. That's what you need. The size of the hole, I like to make them relatively small, but you can feed fuel in the bottom. There's several store-bought stoves you can buy where you put the fuel in the top. That's a bit of a pain. But um, this one, you can feed it in through the bottom. So let's go and do it. All right. So what you're going to do is you're going to figure out where you're going to put these, uh, where you're going to put your hole, right? doesn't matter it doesn't have to be neat who cares really um, so what you want to do is you want to poke your hole let's just go here there's one hold it like this two okay so I got two holes here then let's make my two holes up top. One. Two. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to take this and you're going to slice down with your knife. Slice down through the can, all right? Yeah, you'll have to sharpen your knife after for sure. One. Two. Two slits. Now you're going to cross cut. If any kids are watching this, Man, you got to be careful with these. It's a tool, but this tool can hurt you bad. Just have your parents with you, all right? Have your parents with you. Okay, so there's the hole. Really rough. Not a big deal, all right? It's really rough. Be super careful. These edges are super sharp. They're knife sharp, okay? So I'll show you what I do with them. Take a pair of pliers. Fold this bottom piece in. Squish it down good. That won't ever be in your way again. You can choose to cut it out if you wish. I don't bother. Cans don't last that long. They really don't. What you can do make another little slit here slit here
slit here, and a slit here. Done. Now, the neat thing about this stuff is you can build this right in the bush, right? You don't need the pliers. I'm just doing this so it's neater, that's all. It looks like I'm going to hit my knee. I'm not. It's in the can. It's all right. Okay. Very sharp. Very sharp edges. Okay. Now they've got that slit there. You just simply bend in the sides, okay? It takes a little finagling to get it to go. Just bend in the sides. Slowly twist them in with your pliers. There. Now it's rolled over, okay? So that edge cannot cut you now. That's rolled over. I'll tap down the bottom so that edge won't cut. We're done. All right. Now for the other side. Okay. So what you do is you take your pliers and you roll the inside all these cuts. So right here. You roll these inside, okay? That way you can stick your hand in here and not get cut. It will slice you. It's a tin can. It's gonna slice you. Oh, you can clean it up all you want. It doesn't matter. When you when you light these things up, they get they get dirty real fast. Um, because it's got fire in it. So there we go. Alright? So that's it. So so far, you can light this right now. To what end? Well, you can't put a cup on it and you'll fall through. So now what you want to do is you want to take a simple coat hanger. So there's your stove. Simple coat hanger, right? Measure the top of your stove. Measure it. You're going to go crosswise with your, with your wire, right? So this is pretty simple stuff. I'm going to go crosswise. So cut the wire here and here. Same sort of thing on the other side. I wouldn't go more than across. Like a lot of people like to weave like wire up top. It stops you from putting in your um, your sticks. It really does. It's not needed anyway. So there we go. So that wire will make another hobo stove. We'll stick that there. And what I like to do is I like to bend over the one end, right? Bend it over. Bend over this another end here. Done. Now, how do you punch your holes? Okay. What you want to do is you want to go to the top. All right. So you're going to punch a hole here, and on the opposing side here. You're going to be just off the seam. All right. So there and there. Then two more holes here and here. Okay, once your holes are punched, push your wire through the hole. Okay. Push it through. And it's a simple matter of just bending. Let's put the put the bucket back where it should be. There we go. And we'll just bend this wire down. Okay. Just simply bend it down. Done. It's locked in. Like I said, you can get fancy with these. There's no need. These see, these buckets can be built in five minutes. I mean, literally five minutes. First wire in, right there. Okay, second wire coming up. Okay, once again, push this wire through. There we 
we go. Okay, now, straighten this up. Okay, so now, now we got our cross pieces. Okay, so remember, cut your hole down here. That's a must, you must have that hole cut. That gets cut, then you put your cross pieces in. If you can see the cross pieces here, they are in. Why the cross pieces? This is why. This paraphernalia out, that's why. Your cup sits right there, good delight. That's all there is to making a hobo stove. That's all there is. You don't need drills, you don't need any of that stuff. Just a good knife, sharpen your knife after and uh, she'll be good for the bush again, right? These stoves literally weigh, and, and always double check for sharp edges, just because when you're on a camping trip, the last thing you want is a cut. It's a pain in the butt. Yeah, that rhymed. But anyway, it's a pain, it really is, because you, you just, you don't need it, all right? Um, there, sharp edge is gone. I stick my hand in there and make sure. There's the one little guy here. Take care of him. It's all good. That's all good. Stove's ready to light. Okay, so let's light this thing up. The um, this is your that's your door, so to speak, right? You're gonna need fuel. Now Birch bark, everyone knows birch bark's the stuff to go for, all right? Please don't strip it from the trees using a knife. Strip it only the hanging stuff, the stuff that's peeling off the tree. Don't take a knife to the tree. You'll kill it. So the, um, like I said, birch bark is your, your go-to thing. Now, I like lighting my fires with flint and steel. You can use matches. You could use whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Flint and steel is great, right? It, um, you can light it in rain. It's, it's, and you never have to worry about running out of it. The other way of lighting I, um, the original flint and steel is the old, um, it's real, flint, which is a stone, and actual steel. This is the original flint and steel. And uh, so you, you strike it like this, and there's your sparks. This is specialized. You need, generally, in this kind of weather, you're gonna need char cloth. Now, char cloth is subject to moisture. Not the easiest stuff to carry with you, and why would you buy it? Just go out and buy a commercial made stay, uh, flint and steel, you're good to go. Now, how do you like this thing? Get your wood ready, all right? So you're gonna need this is um, this is off a balsam tree. These are just the twigs. Don't pick it up off the ground. Not in this weather anyway. It's, it won't light. Um, this stuff's relatively dry. Good to go. Now what I want to do is I'll take some birch bark. I always looks for, for nests. See this? How cool is that? That's a gypsy moth nest right there. Right? I don't like burning things, but gypsy moths, not cool. So I'll just take them off. That's a, that, those are eggs. They're all eggs. You can see them. They're all eggs. And, uh, well, they're gone. So if anybody gets upset with me for getting rid of those gypsy moss, don't. They're not indigenous, all right? So if I find any spiders in here, I will let them go. There's one right there. There's a spider in his little nest right there. He's gone. I won't kill him. Now. Take your birch bark, right? Simple. Just rub it all up. Just mush it all up. Just like that. Put it in the bottom of your can. Okay? Just throw it in the bottom of your can. Take some more. Take your time when you're lighting a fire. It's not a race. Just take your time. Sometimes I've been out in the winter time or even during a canoe trip and I've been like literally shivering. Like I've, I, I'm soaking wet through the through to the bone, and I'll still take my time. You have to, because if you don't take your time, that fire ain't lighting. Okay, 
Um, take your sticks. If they're at le if they're damp, if your sticks are damp, fuzz them up. All right. Take your blade, run it across your across your stick this way, not this way. Rub it like this. Get off that outer layer. All right. You just take off the outer layer. It's the outer layer that's wet. The inside layer is bone dry. Take off that outer layer. Okay. Doesn't take you long. Just take it off. It'll help you when you're when you're doing this. All right. Throw it in your bucket. This doesn't have to be that organized, all right? This smaller stuff, it's fine. I don't have to fuzz it up, all right? So I can shove that right in the bucket, just like this. Get up, done. Now some people, some people like to make fuzz sticks and a fuzz stick is, um, you get a piece of wood. I got a piece of wood here. And what you do, is you take the piece of wood and you just simply carve into it. And you keep carving, you see this? You just carve those strips, you just keep going. Carve, 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 carve. These strips are nice and dry and they light right away. Just keep carving. Please be careful with your hands. Always keep your hand above the blade, okay? Um, so there we go. So that's, that's a fuzz stick, you see how that works? That's a fuzz stick. Now what you can do, you can stick this in the fire as is. I won't because it's the tin can. I'll just strip this off. I just rip it off. Now I got some really nice tinder. Throw in the can. Good. Next, um, I'll actually make some more of that stuff. Oh, by the way, if you want to split wood with a knife, right? Um, you just simply put your knife like this and wall it down, okay? Work it down through the wood. See what I'm doing? Just work it down through the wood. There you go. Now you got some nice dry, dry wood on the inside, okay? Again, fuzz stick. Put your wood down on something firm. Shave down. Just like that, nice and easy. That knife hasn't been sharpened since I cut that stove, so she's still good. But I will sharpen it before I get through this. So here we go. Just keep fuzzing it up, okay? Now if it's pouring rain out, this fuzz stick, she'll light, for sure it'll light. Okay, now I'm gonna peel it off again. And I throw it in the stove. There we go, done. Now, how am I gonna light this? Okay, I could light it with a lighter, I could light it with flint and steel. Let's go with flint and steel. Let's go old school. All right, so what I'm gonna do now Old school means that I have to fuzz this up. All right, just get some, just get some of the fuzzy stuff going. All right, so I'll just rub my knife across like this until I get some nice pieces of birch bark in there. Just like that. Okay, you see that's all fuzzed up here. Now we'll get my flint and steel. If it's the least bit damp out, this ain't lighting. Okay, not if you don't, not if you don't take care of it. It will not light. Char cloth. I'll do a video on char cloth, how to make it. Char cloth is made by. Well, I use my old T-shirts. They got to be 100% cotton. You put it in a tin can. It's a shoe polish can. One little tiny hole at the top of the can. That's all you need. Throw this in a fire pit with your, with all your. Uh, bits of clo cloth in there. What it does, it burns it without oxygen. All right, so it chars it. And you'll see a flame shoot out of the top hole here. And then once that flame subsides, that's it. Your char cloth is done. You're ready to rock and roll. Now, okay, so let's get this lit. This is char cloth here. Flint, which is a rock. And steel, which is a piece of metal that I bent around. I, um, I heated it up. And I bent it around in a C shape, all right, so it can go in my hand. You can buy this stuff too, okay? Buy it online for sure. Okay, there's several different ways to hold your char cloth. It doesn't matter. I normally put, I'm a lefty, I put my char cloth on top of my stone and I hold my C, C um, steel in my left hand. Okay, so the idea is you take your char cloth, put it on your stone. Then strike it with your steel. 
and then you got to move fast. You got to put it in your tinder, okay? There we go. Okay, char cloth is now burning. That goes inside your tinder. flame let her burn put it in your stove okay put that in your stove there you go so now your hobo stove's going put your gear away you'll see that the outer patina on this um, on the tin can will disappear I'm telling you just as a heater even you can have a fire going right in front of you and it's safe it's totally safe it's not going anywhere get some wood ready there we go there we go it's a beautiful thing put that burned down Now, here's what's neat about these stoves. I can load the bottom of the stove with my wood. You'll see here, okay? I can put my wood in the bottom of the stove. There we go. She's going good. So if you're in an urban environment even, you know what, you don't have to have a big fire. Fire is like, amazing it's like it brings you home you can have this in your backyard wherever you are you can have this right I wouldn't suggest it on a balcony of an apartment but anyway you could have this anywhere it going. Now I can dry my pants. I'm sitting on a nice little log here. I can dry my pants. I'm totally safe. This isn't going anywhere. I want to boil some water, right? I want to boil water. Put it right here. There we go. You can see the outside is now getting all black and charred. 